Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be talking about Arduino controllers. So in front of me is a whole host of Arduino controllers that I've built in the past. Some of them are a little bit messy and all over the place and then some of them are a little bit neater and a little bit better. So uh, this one here is a complete uh, hand rolled Arduino controller that has a throttle on it which I use for don't need roads. I'm not going to be talking too much about this one today but we might in the future because this might need an upgrade. Uh, what we're actually going to be talking about today is this one. So this is a Wii Nunchuck and it has a little control box on it. This control box actually houses the Arduino and everything mostly because a Wii Nunchuck uses really weird screws uh, to open it up and also there's actually not a whole lot of room inside this Wii Nunchuck once you do open it up which makes it a little bit hard to jam electronics into there. Also uh, today's video I kind of want to do a bit of a step by step so that you guys can follow along at home and it doesn't make any sense for me to do a step by step for a Nunchuck because the Nunchuck is now kind of three generations old because the Wii is three generations old which means that very soon we'll start to see these disappearing you won't be able to buy them anywhere other than second hand shops um, and even then maybe not all that much so rather than do a uh, tutorial slash step by step on this what I'm actually going to do is do a tutorial and step by step on this thing so this is a little uh, remote control I think it's a Bluetooth 4 or a light, Bluetooth Lite or whatever that new version of Bluetooth is controller that I picked up for about five bucks and unlike the Wii controller it's actually got a little battery compartment in it which means that we can uh, use this space to house all of our electronics in which is really really good. So uh, because we're housing all of our electronics inside this space we're going to use a power bank to actually power this thing, but everything is going to be self-contained in here. There will just be a USB cable hanging off the end, which will then plug into a power bank, and that is going to be a lot nicer and easier to hold than all of this mess that is here. I mean, it's okay for me because I've got very big hands, but I want to use these as loan controllers for my loan bots, so I wanted to shrink this down and remove all of the batteries that are sitting along the back here, which could very easily pop out. So yeah, we're going to do this one today and yeah let's uh, let's go through like I said I'm going to do this as a bit of a step by step uh, so you guys can follow along and turn a controller something similar to this into an Arduino controller for uh, this Arduino system that I use in all my combat robots. So I'm going to voice over this build process so these uh, this video can come something like a tutorial these controllers are quite easy to pull apart and are uh, quite useful for this process. So to get these things apart you open the battery compartment and undo the two screws that you'll find in there and then once you've undone those the top doesn't quite pop off you actually need to get a small flathead screwdriver into uh, the sides there and click out two little pop tabs that are up the front closer up towards the actual joystick. With the top off the circuit board pops out quite easily but do be careful in this first step because there are buttons at the front and you don't really want to move those out of their housing. In fact personally I uh, remove the circuit board and then apply hot glue directly to that front board to keep it in place because it doesn't need to move anywhere and I've personally found that if you let that thing move then it becomes harder to actually get it uh, back where it needs to be. With the board removed, you then unsolder the connections to the actual circuit board so that the main circuit board can sit free. Once you have uh, done that, it is time to actually take the circuit board apart. Most of the circuit board is completely useless to us, so what we really need to do is uh, cut this circuit board down and the easiest way to do that is to take a knife and cut just above the buttons, uh, the top buttons closest to the actual thumbstick there. So score the circuit board a lot across that line, literally as close as you can possibly get it to the top of the buttons. Then grabbing two pliers, uh, kind of wiggle it back and forth until the circuit board breaks. Uh, the closest you can get it, the closer you can get it to the top of those buttons, the better, because you'll have the two little holes that you are eventually going to use to screw that circuit board that has the joystick down and hold that in place. 
To finish the modifications for the hardware for this, uh, take the springs out of the battery compartment, then goggle up because it is time to do some cutting. So we're going to cut all of the battery compartment out. Uh, and personally, I used a Dremel just to kind of cut the top off and then use pliers and flush cutters to cut the sides away. Basically, you just want to free that up as much as you possibly can, but make sure you leave enough plastic so that the back can still clip into place. And also that the screw that holds the very back furthest away from the thumbstick, uh, that th screw can still go in and hold the two halves together. So on the back of the thumbstick, there are two sets of three pins. Uh, in each set, one is for ground, one is for signal, and one is for power. The one in the middle of each set of three is always the signal pin. And then also on this particular board, there are two tiny little resistors that actually add some extra resistance between, normally between the chip and the, um, the thumbstick. We need to get rid of those as the first step. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove those literally just by putting a huge blob of solder on the end of the soldering iron tip and hitting both of them at the same time. Uh, once they're good and hot, if you just move slowly to the left, both of them will kind of push off and that will be fine. Then you're going to attach a wire directly to all four pads that those used to be connected to. Realistically, you need the two of those pads closest to the thumbstick to actually be connected, but if you just hit all four, that'll be totally fine. Then you wanna to connect to one of the ground pins and you also then wanna to connect to the signal pins uh, on both of the thumbsticks. And at this point, we're just gonna leave those wires hanging and doing nothing. Once all the wires are done, it's time to connect them to the Arduino. So the power goes to the five volt pin on the Arduino, that's quite important. And then you need to connect the two signal pins to A0 and A1 on the Arduino and then connect the ground to ground. In my case, I'm using a circuit board to do this, so I'm not actually gonna to connect to the ground on the Arduino, but if you're not using a circuit board to do this, connect that line to a ground pin on the Arduino. We are going to stick with the Arduino and connect the buttons to the Arduino. So there should be a red, a black, and a white wire. The red and the white wires are the signal and they are gonna go into pin two and pin three. The black wire is ground, so that just needs to be connected to any ground pin on the Arduino. Then it's time to prepare the NRF chip. I have personally found that you need to hit both of the dots on the back of the board with a hot soldering iron, just with a little bit of solder on it, just to make sure that those connections are good and solid. If not, sometimes the NRF chip will not work. Then we're also going to wrap the whole section in tape and then finally use a very small uh, flathead screwdriver to pry the standoffs off the pins so that this thing can sit down a little bit nicer. Uh, this is also helpful if you want to remove the pins completely and add your own wires to it. One step we should have done earlier is actually to cut a nice little nick in the back of the case for the power wire. So we're just going to do this, this with some flush cutters just so that um, it's a nice little cut and there's not plastic in it everywhere. Then of course we're going to sand that down so that all of the rough edges disappear and the wire can sit in there without being broken. Then we're going to connect the Arduino to the NRF board. I will put on the screen now the connected, uh, the list of connections between the Arduino and the NRF chip. Personally, I am using a circuit board to do this. You can do this in any way you like. Uh, I will link to my Instructable down below that will have another copy of uh, that image that I just showed with the connection pins. It will also have a version of the circuit board. I don't know if it's the same one. I might have to go through and update that. Next, we're going to check the fit of everything inside the controller. Once we've kind of got a rough idea of the fit, we're going to tie a knot into the power cable. This, for me, is just a USB cable, uh, but we're gonna tie this knot in place so that the, um, there's, there's a bit of strain relief, so that if somebody grabs hold of the USB cable and pulls it really hard, it's not going to rip the wires out of the Arduino blob that we're soldering up. Then of course, connect the power uh, cable directly into the Arduino and or everything else that is hooked up. Then it is time to finish up. So 
cut the standoffs from the underside of the button. Those things are no longer necessary. Then we're going to glue those buttons into the lid so that they don't move. I'm just gonna use hot glue, but you can use whatever glue you like. Next, you want to put in some screws to hold the um, thumbstick down, the joystick down into place. There should be two little standoffs in underneath the holes for where the joystick should go. So just put a little self-tapping plastic screw down through those holes, down into those standoffs, and that will hold that rigidly in place. If things aren't quite working, just put a dub of hot glue around that screw hole and everything should be okay. Then you're going to simply click the top back on, add the screw to the underside, and that should have everything back together. Okay, and now we are done. So that is the controller all set up. Uh, I've also thrown some code into here. I will put the code for this up on the Instructable, which I will link down below. The values in here you may need to tweak and change just to get the stick to actually work correctly for you because each individual setup might be a little bit different in the positions of the stick as compared to the value that gets read into the Arduino. So you might have to go through and change some of the um, throttle position cutoff values in there. Uh, but you can have a look at all of that kind of stuff if you decide to go ahead and build one of these things. So I'm just going to quickly power all this up. So powering it up is as easy as plugging it into a, patch, uh, a battery of some kind. Uh, this particular one, it actually lights up the back button red because these buttons aren't very thick and there is a nice little red light in there. And then if we power up uh, absolutely quackers here, quackers will go a bit mental. Uh, and then we can actually drive quackers around. Now quackers is not set up quite correctly. Uh, one of the motors is backwards, so if I push forwards it turns rather than going forwards, but that's okay because it was doing that on the other controller as well. So that's actually inside Ducket and not inside the code for the controller. But as you can see, controller is working nicely. Oh, Ducket almost goes off the table there. Uh, and it's very loud when I hit the table with it, but it is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. And I've got the two different modes for the buttons. All seems to be working very, very well indeed. Uh, so there you go, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I hope some of you out there actually can make one of these because these things are quite useful and quite nice and convenient to hold too. It's not a lot uh, to have in your hands and I, yeah, I think it's come out quite well. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.